Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we have your first look at the Tier 5 American Cruiser, or should I say American Light Cruiser, the Dallas. So without further ado, let's look at our commander. We've got Norman Scott with Isoroku, or Isu, Isoroku, oh my god, Isoroku Yamamoto. <laughs> <laughs> Nikolai Kuznetsov is our secondary. Then we've got uh, Beyond Range, we've got Igniter, we've got Punch Through, we've got Fixated, and we've got Fully Packed as our commanders. Of course, Norman Scott on my build is maxed out with the exception of his legendaries, because who's got that many legendaries? Anyway, moving on, let's look at the ship. Now, as you can see, we've got uh, Aiming Systems Mod 1, and we have Steering Gears Mod 2. We are fully loaded, and we have, or fully upgraded, the American camo on there, the red, white, and blue camo, because, oh my god, it's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, our community tributor flag, and we are running the uh, extra uh, epic booster, so uh, keep that in mind. Now, stats. 28,300 hit points, not a lot. Uh, torpedo damage reduction, 4%, not good. It's a cruiser, don't get torped. Now, you have... American light cruisers are all about quantity. It's not about punching you in the face. It's more of a, I'm gonna cut you down. It's gonna happen. It will be a thing. Even when you get citadels in this thing, it's not really a huge hit, okay? Uh, but it's the amount of shells that you're hitting the target with that inflict the damage, and that's what we wanna go over. So we've got two by two and two by three turrets. Uh, there are five guns over the nose, and the rest of them are all over the rear. 152 millimeter guns, 17.1 kilometer range, seven and a half second reload time. Now, if you guys remember the, uh, oh, what, what was the ship we did? The Wichita. We had that thing down to eight point. You can actually get it down to eight at least. I know that. So that's kind of what you're looking at as far as the reload time. Seven and a half seconds is pretty freaking good. Uh, the turn time on the turrets, 20 seconds is pretty good. Uh, HE shell damage is 2100, but a 15% chance to set fire with our current build. And our AP shell damage is 3240. So when you, and that's the maximum damage. So when you citadel somebody, that's how much damage per citadel you get. Uh, so it's not a huge hit, but by golly, it's going to hit you a lot. Uh, it's got some secondaries as well. They're 127 millimeter guns, and uh, they do a fantastic job of shooting down planes. Between the secondary batteries and the AA, it's 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 really good. Dual purpose armament. It's good at shooting down uh, aircraft, which is why light cruisers being introduced is a thing. Now, maximum speed of this thing, 33 and a half knots, is right there with most of the uh, American cruisers and battleship. Uh, well, the Iowa anyway. Uh, that you're used to so nothing to, out of the ordinary there 650 meter turning radius isn't the greatest But it's pretty nimble from shift and side to side when you need to Concealment 11.1 kilometers is not great, especially for a light cruiser at tier 5 uh, but You know, it's gonna be a thing. You're not gonna be concealed. You you're gonna be concealed until you don't want to be uh, basically uh, anyway overview Surgical shells. Short shell fuse time results in lower chance of overpenetration. In other words, this thing is deadly versus cruisers if they give the broadside. You'll see some of that in the uh, video coming up. Reloader, above average main battery reload time. Again, this thing is all about quantity. American light cruisers, quantity. Think Atlanta. Think of, you know, all of the light cruisers are all quantity based. The, mo the more shells you can pump out, the more damage you're going to get. Sluggish shot. Difficult to aim at long distance, but the trajectory allows for effective fire from cover. This is the textbook light shells that shoot all the way up into space and then come down and, and hit the target, if you know what you're doing. Dallas. A designed version of a small light cruiser development which preceded the creation of the Helena class, or the Helena class cruisers. She had features characteristics of most subsequent ships of this type in the U.S. Navy. Moderate speed, the absence of torpedo armament, and the, avail the availability of dual-purpose guns complementing the 152mm main batteries mounted in turrets. So, uh, it's very, very good. 
is what I'm saying. As far as like uh, the AA, the American light cruisers are kind of known for their ability to shoot stuff down. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's just, it's a thing. Year of design was 1934, but it doesn't say that there was any ever built. Normally it shows that there was a, a build. So, uh, is this a, uh, American ship that was never built? Somebody will have to let me know in the comments below. But, without further ado, let's take a look at this ship. Now, first of all, that camo is sexy. I like it a lot. Stars and stripes all day, every day. I'll take it. It just fits, doesn't it? Doesn't it just fit? Ugh. I'm sorry. I'm biased. Everybody knows it. But, uh, American ships are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you know, prove me wrong. So, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so, we are going to be on Fault Line, and we are going to be, uh, pretty aggressive in this match, but there are some things you need to know about this particular line. Now, I say it's death by a thousand cuts, and I do mean that. I mean, this thing is literally meant to cut you down over time. It is not a devastating strike, generally. It is most likely multiple citadels in a row if you're in a cruiser, or just death over time if you're in a battleship. You have got to make sure when you're in this that you do not take too many rounds in return, and if you do, make sure that you know what's shooting you. Because if you screw this up, you will not live very long in these light cruisers. Unlike the New Orleans, unlike the Baltimore, unlike, well, I guess the Pensacola is to somewhat, you cannot expect to bow tank anything other than cruisers, okay? You don't want to be in a situation where you are bow tanking battleships or you are taking broadsides from battleships because at that point it's all RNG, guys. If, if you give RNG a chance to screw you, nine times out of ten, guess what? You're on the bottom of the ocean. So don't put it in RNG's hands. Now, that being said, we're going to put it in RNG's hands <laughs> in this match on at least one occasion um, later on. But right off the bat, you're going to notice that I start... Well, you guys don't know it, but what I did right off the bat, there are three battleships against us. I'm in a light cruiser. I'm looking for where those three battleships are, and all three of the battleships are spotted heading to the other side of the map. Right about this point, I start smiling. Also, next thing you're going to notice is that there are planes spotted ahead of us, which means there are likely cruisers ahead of us on the left side of the map. So what do I do? I have my plane up already. I'm waiting to see them. And just as it gets it around to the point where it can actually come around, we actually shoot down one of their planes, and then we get to actually start seeing them. We've got a Nuremberg. We've got a Dallas. We've got a second Dallas over there, all of which are about to pass in front of this nice little passage. Now I can say, I can make all of the little thing like, uh, what do you want to call it, the intuitiveness, I, I, what do you call it when you make it a, a thing? I don't remember. Anyway, I could, I can make a lot of references to, you know, a Spartan holding the hot gates and that sort of thing. Numbers count for nothing if you are well defended. We are in a very good place. However, we do drift a little too far forward, so this first shot's going to be a little underwhelming. But the Nuremberg is not going to think that. Wait for it. God, man. I was spotted for a long time, but look at the grouping. Pow! One Citadel. Knocking him right in the kisser. And there's more where that comes from, Sunshine. <laughs> Two more Citadels to add to the total. Can we make it a third? Fire all the guns. Oh, God there's an enemy Dallas. That's not preferable. What is preferable is he's broadside on. So you get a Citadel and you get a Citadel and we take two Citadels off of him. We want to charge forward, get away from these torpedoes. And this guy's just going to sit here and absolutely take it as we get another Citadel off of him. Now I could tell you guys all, all day long what it means to not be broadside on to enemy cruisers who are firing AP. But I feel like sometimes it's just better to show you <laughs> what happens when somebody who knows what they're doing with a cruiser versus somebody who has absolutely no idea. <laughs> 
Now, in fairness, it all comes down to planning, okay? I planned that from the moment I saw where they were all heading. And they had to sail out in front of me broadside on. I was not going to make myself in the same situation. We were angled. We left ourselves an out in case the torpedoes come. We know the Hippers got tor- or the, uh, the Nuremberg has torpedoes. But surely this Dallas wouldn't make the same mistake. Oh, never mind. <laughs> he does realize his mistake, but it's a little late because we get a citadel off of him, taking us up to nine citadels. And then we get a nice little hit on him, but the battleships are really just pounding him. And then the Konigsberg on our team finishes him off. So we have an absolutely decisive victory on this side of the map. And that is a huge, huge boost to morale because that means all of us get to turn our ships around. Now, it's going to be a little more difficult for me. Everybody else is in the open water. I've got to turn around in this little tiny passageway. So don't mind me while I make a 60 point turn and try to get this big ship turned around. But hopefully that kind of showcases you that these things aren't just high explosive spammers, guys. Know when to use armor piercing. You're going to see more of it later on. There is a time for high explosive and there is a time for armor piercing. You need to know the difference when you're in a cruiser because cruisers are the one class that will switch back and forth depending on who is actually needing to be shot. And I cannot stress enough how much knowing when and when not to use high explosive or armor piercing will actually benefit you. Now we take a shot at the Emerald. He got absolutely popped. Uh, we didn't quite lead him enough, and uh, unfortunately, the New York takes him down. Any, or fortunately, the New York takes him down anyway. But uh, as we finish up our last turn here, we're going to start heading back. Now, there's a couple New Mexicos out here. Now, what's fancy about the New Mexico? Well, it's got 50 caliber guns, which are very, very nasty. It can reach out and touch you from a long ways away, and it does so very accurately. Unlike maybe the Colorado. The Colorado has 45 caliber guns, but they are 16 inch, uh, 16 inch shells. They do a massive amount of damage, but they are definitely not as accurate as the New Mexico. The New Mexico is a devastating strike waiting to happen when you shoot at anything, let alone cruisers. And so when you're in this position in a light cruiser, now I am not a light cruiser player. I don't dodge. I don't duck and weave and, and hide behind islands. I am a heavy cruiser and a heavy battleship player. I like to get up in there and slug it out. That is not the right play style. <laughs> but that being said, if you weigh your options and you take the, the shots that they give us, now, you'll notice here I do use a little bit of the auto-aim. Now, a lot of people ask about the auto-aim feature. It's not perfect, guys, I promise. But basically what it is is when you look at an enemy and you get the target acquired or target lock on him, whether you do it manually or the, the game actually grabs a hold of it for you when you look at him, it will give you an idea of where to shoot. Now, it's not perfect. You're not going to hit every shell. You're not going to do... But you have seen we have got some hits, and now that we can see them we can definitely make sure we start hitting them. But that's where that amazing firing arc comes in. When you're behind those mountains, when you're behind the hills and you're able to just lob them from space and they just rain down upon your enemies and they just absolutely cook them. Now, unlike the Atlanta, this thing actually has potential for real damage rather than just all high explosive. Now, you can absolutely nuke people in the Atlanta, especially cruisers, especially when they come around the corner and they don't realize you're there. But watch us switch. We are 10 kilometers from this New Mexico. We switch over to armor piercing and we get some penetrations and down he goes. And that's why I say that you're not always going to be spamming high explosive in these American light cruisers. It's best when you set fires and then you switch back to armor piercing because your armor piercing is still very, very good, especially coming in from orbit like they often do. They can get those penetrations on the deck. Now you'll see here that we immediately start using high explosive. We want to hit the superstructure. We get six hits out of the, uh, the volley that we send. And you can see we're just trying to set fire. We get them on fire, 
and he starts turning in to try to bow tank. Now, bow tanking does really, really nothing to high explosives. Like, you're, you're just not doing anything. As long as I'm not hitting your side armor, I should be able to get some sort of damage. Now, we're obviously shattering off the uh, side armor right now, so I'm proving myself wrong. But the funny thing about those shatters is it still has a potential to set fires. I don't know how it works. I just know that it's a thing. Now, he fires high explosive back at me. I don't know why. But maybe he was expecting the destroyer to come at him. Uh, but he fires high explosive back at me, which is surprisingly decent against us because we don't have much hit points anyway. And then we go ahead, we try to get another fire here, and then we switch over to armor piercing. Because he's so close that we would have a very easy time cutting through his thinner armor. Notice I'm not aiming at the torpedo belt. I'm aiming a little higher because I need to get those Ships penetrations. You can see six penetrations through the upper side armor, and we go ahead and finish them off with six more. You destroyed an enemy and then we've got a marble head out here. He's quite a ways away. We arm, we, we launch the shells across the map with a hope and a prayer and beautifully shot. And we get the Citadel because it's a marble header in Omaha and it's broadside. It's going to take a Citadel. That's just the way that works. But we end up getting 75,000 damage done, three kills, top of the leaderboard with 2,100 base XP. And all in all, while the light cruisers aren't really my, my thing, it's not really my play style, it is fun to take out these ships that fire so fast and just go out and annoy people. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.